guys, it's Rin here and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, as the title suggests, I'm going to share some tips and tricks on how I'm going to be recreating a makeup look suitable for a passport or ID photo. So basically, this is such a spontaneous idea. I realised that my provisional licence has expired and also my passport is coming up um, to the end of the expiry date as well. So I need an ID um, as soon as possible. Uh, so I thought that I'll share with you some tips on how I'm going to be recreating the look. Now I have to be honest, I absolutely hate my picture on both my passport and my provisional licence. They were like from almost 10 years ago. I had this awful haircut, um, I had these like sideways um, like a fringe thing going on um, and it just made me look very silly so obviously I haven't had that hairstyle for a very long time but looking back it's definitely something that I'm always very embarrassed or shy to show my friends or just the people who need to check it. So how to not make the same mistake again, I'm going to be doing something a little bit more timeless but also very suited for flash photography because in those um, ID photo booths they use flash photography to take the picture. So there are certain things that I would generally um, avoid and I would want to um, share those tips with you guys. So without further ado, let's begin. So first of all, I've started with my hair. I did tie it back into a low ponytail because I felt like this was the neatest um, look that I wanted to go for. I didn't want hair in my face, especially not whilst I'm doing my makeup. Um, and I did use a few spritz of this Silver Crin Classic Hairspray. It's got a firm hold, so it does keep all the flyaways intact. I mean, I, I don't think it's um, one of those that are super sort of gelled and stick back, but it certainly does give you a very natural look. So in terms of my outfit, I picked something that was um, a little bit more classic and a little bit more smarter. So 10 years ago, I was still a teen and I just wore whatever casual top I found. So I want to go for something that I know would never run out of fashion and wouldn't run out of time. So this is like a blazer dress, you won't see the bottom, so all you'll see is the blazer. It's like a v-neck blazer as well so you get to see the shoulder bit. What I would say is pick your outfits wisely. I would definitely recommend against going for something like a white blouse or a white dress or anything white or beige because it will literally wash you out. The background of this image will be white and uh, also just to find something that you are happy to look at for 10 years. There's no editing in this so like just like with the hair, keep your hair neat and slicked, um, keep your outfit clean and make sure you iron it as well. So the most important part of this video now, um, we're going to be talking about the makeup. Now in terms of how to tackle um, the makeup look for the passport or ID photos, um, what I would say is that because they use flash photography, there will be certain products that I would advise against, for instance using um, products with um, too many sort of light reflecting particles or um, using products that are overly dewy. Anything that sort of reflects lights in a funny way, um, like glitter or metallic shades or dewy foundations or the glass skin um, effect, balms that creates that highlighter, I would say for the purpose of your passport photos, maybe avoid them altogether. I personally would use a slightly more matte foundation or semi-matte if you've got slightly more drier skin or moisturise and then use the matte foundation. Um, and I would also use colours that you would wear every single day. I use probably very minimal in general, especially when I'm travelling. So the only time I'd be using my passport or my ID would be when I'm travelling, possibly or also when I'm out in the evenings, they'll always have to check IDs. Um, so I want it to be the best representation of me. I don't want someone to look at my ID and think, this isn't you. So think about these things as well. Other tips I would recommend is for your lip colour, again I would go for as close to your natural lips over something like a bold red lip, unless this is your like everyday look. So let's begin with makeup, which is the most important part of this video. I'm going to start off with the skin first of all. At the moment, as always, my skin is very dry so I'm going to make sure to prep it and I would advise you guys to do the same because 
these uh, cameras are not forgiving. Just make sure that any sort of um, nuances on the skin, whether it's dryness or certain coloration, make sure you sort of um, enhance it using makeup. So that would be my first step. And I'm going to use these two products for my skincare. I'm going to be using the Hydra Beauty Microgel Year just under the eyes. And then I will top that with the Laneige Waterbank Moisture Cream for my skin. I love the feeling of this gel serum on my eyes. It is so relaxing. Now I tend to put this on because I sometimes use a little bit of concealer under the eyes and a lot of people do as well just to hide away any darkness under the eyes especially if you've had a rough night <laughs> the night before or the week before. And gently massaging the area and taking it to the temples. There's some kind of like lymphatic drainage around this area, so I'm just kind of removing any sort of puffiness away. I had a bad night of sleep, so this is why I am taking extra care around the eyes. So now I'm just going to move on to the Laneige Moisturising Cream. If you didn't know already, I'm a huge fan of K-Beauty. This is something that I personally find very effective on my skin. baby hair. I'm getting a lot of like little short hairs along sort of the hairline bit. I think my hair is falling out and trying to regrow back. So I think that's enough to have a moisturiser. I love the smell of this product. It's very very subtle. I don't know what it is to be honest but it just smells quite floral to me so it says that this one has um, well it provides a healthy moisture film by protecting skin's moisture barrier with green mineral water so I've got the dr. Paw Paw um, scrub and nourish I'm just going to use the nourishing balm just on my lips this product tastes awful but it's not designed for eating um, and it's very effective. I always feel like my lips are very, very nourished afterwards. So the next part I'm going to move on to is the complexion and I'm going to start off with my base. So I'm going to be using um, one of my favourite matte foundations and this is the Chanel Ultra Le Tank Velvet. Um, this does have SPF 15 and it gives you a very beautiful velvety matte finish. Um, it's also water based so I really like the texture because I don't well, I almost don't feel anything on my skin, um, which I really, really like, and it has that blurring, smoothing effect. So in my eyes, I feel like it's perfect for um, getting a picture taken. So there are other options or foundations that you can use if you just search it up on Google. There's a huge list online of certain foundations that does not give you flashback. Um, some are light coverage like this, some are um, slightly more fuller coverage. So there's that Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation that's quite well known in the bridal makeup artist community um, that doesn't give the flashback and there's also the um, HD Foundation by Makeup Forever which I absolutely love using. I'm going to be using one of the um, Chanel's loose powders. This is the Poudre Universelle Libre and it's a natural finishing loose powder. They do have it in variations of shades and this is the 20 beige which is my shade across um, all their products, so like for foundations, concealers, and loose powders. And I find that it gives a very beautiful um, smoothing effect, and that's why I personally enjoy using it. I'm also going to incorporate um, one of my latest purchase from Rose Ink. Um, I'm not sure if the concealer is workable with this foundation, um, in terms of the shade, I think the texture will be fine, but the shade is um, slightly more warmer in this, so we'll see how it goes. So let's begin. I'm going to be using just a pea sized and a half of this on the back of my hand. And I'm going to be using the Fluid and Powder Foundation um, 
by Chanel as well, just to pop that on. I like this because um, it's great for pressing the product on and also creating that fuller effect. I prefer a brush over a beauty blender to be honest because of the hygiene aspect of it. Um, but this kind of does almost what a beauty blender does but in a brush format in my eyes I feel like it does because it's so compact and I'm basically just like tapping it on I like the fact that the brush size is very small so I can use it to pop any excess foundation on my eyelids I generally do that just because there's always of like veins around the eye area for everyone in general so just adds a little bit of coverage all right I'm gonna go in with a little bit of this rose ink I'm just gonna pop it in those kind of areas I feel like it is a little bit warmer than my foundation um, and it's a little bit warmer than what I would personally choose However, I'm happy to go along with that because it's very, very subtle. I'm just going to take that down a little bit. I'm just going to pop any excess just around the nose area. When applying concealers as well around the eyes, um, try to avoid pushing it too close to the bottom lash line because that would just end up closing the eyes making it look a lot smaller than it actually is so the idea is just to pop it where you see sort of the the darkness under the eye because usually you can see it just around this area all right so i'm just going to set the makeup with a little bit of powder just sort of around the t-zone area um, and the kind of cheek area as well so anywhere that the light hits I'm going to set a bit of powder and mattify and this is my go-to powder at the moment it comes with a little like puffy thing but I don't like to use it because um, it just gets contaminated otherwise I'm just going to go in with a little brush because I don't really like using too much powder in general I personally tend to avoid applying too much around the eye area, especially under the eye because you can end up getting sort of that crow's feet effect and drying it up too much. But a little bit can work and will help hold the creamy concealer. I'm also going to put some on my eyelid so that the eyeshadow will sit on it quite smoothly afterwards. You can just go in with a bigger brush, but I'm just using this because my skin generally is quite dry, it doesn't really require that much powder. This upper top lip is the bit that gets the most shiny, especially when it's warm. So I'm just gonna take it down with a bit of powder. Right, the next important part is to add some color. I'm going to be using the Chanel Solid Tan, um, and this is a bronzing makeup base, which I enjoy using just on the um, cheekbone area. A lot of people like to use a fluffy brush for this, but I personally use this because I want to create a little bit of um, structure. I don't know if you can see it, it just creates just a little bit of color. Because the color is so dark, it creates a contouring effect for me. Gonna pop a little bit on the forehead area just close to the hairline so that creates a little bit of that sculpting effect just a little bit on this as well on the jaws so right now i've got a little bit of that contouring effect which i really wanted for the picture and that just kind of create a bit more structure for the face right the next important thing is the eyebrows now the eyebrows are probably the only most noticeable things that will frame your entire look because you're not going to overly do up your eyes. I'm just going to brush it through, just up and out. Now I've got a few like spots in my brows recently. I think it's just from eating too many spicy crisps. 
I do break out when I do that. I'm going to be using the NYX Precision Brow Pencil, which is a brow pencil that I've been using like forever because I really like it. The key is to just fill in the gaps and structure the brows how you like it. If you want it to be more arched, then fill the top part more. If you want it to be slightly longer, then start seeing where the dimensions are. My brows start quite sort of um, far out, so I'm, I tend to fill it in a little bit so that it gets a bit more closer towards the center, but not too much, so I don't want a monobrow either. Um, and I also lengthen the brows ever so slightly as well. Another thing is, I recommend you guys to do the makeup look on your brows the way you normally do it every day. You don't want to do something so extravagant and so different from your norm because at the end of the day, this is going to be the truest representation of you. So, what I love using when I need to accentuate my brows is one of these sort of like gel um, brow products. So, it's like a little brow mascara. I'm just going to pop this all over. So how I basically brush it up to create structure is to sort of like follow the natural growth of the, the brows. And work it in. The next thing I'm going to do are my eyes. And actually, this is going to be very, very simple. I don't want my eyes to look overly made up. So I'm just going to add a little bit of shadow. And I'm just going to start off with this sort of um, brown shade. I'm just going to take it to the crease. So I want, want my eyes to be slightly enlarged, but not too much. That it looks like product. I'm going to use one of these tapered eyeshadow brushes. I'm just going to take it down a little bit. So what I've done is just applied it in sort of like a very small um, semicircle, like a half moon shape, just slightly above the crease and then take it down a little bit on the borderline. This colour is very close to my skin colour and that's why I'm happy to use this because it doesn't really stand out too much as um, too smoky or too dark. I'm just going to use a black liner but very very close to the waterline. Right now the idea is to frame the eyes. I'm not going to change any of the shape and I'm not going to lengthen it or create a cat liner that I always love doing because the idea is to make myself look exactly how I would normally look without makeup, but better. <laughs> just go in with a little bit of a, um, a small brush just to blend that into the shadow. And I'm going to use a bit of this brown shadow as well to do that. Right, so the next part of the look that I'm going to go with is the lashes, which is everything for this. As you can see, this is almost like a no makeup makeup look. So I'm going to go in with a lash curler to create some definitions for my eyes. If you are one of those people that really like wearing lashes, I would probably use something that's very, very natural, still not too overly done up, unless this is something you're gonna be doing every single time. Now, if you think about the amount of times you go to the airport, um, and also, would you actually wear false lashes, full on beat makeup uh, when you travel? If you do, and the answer is yes, then 
feel free to do that. Personally, I know that I don't wear a lot of makeup when I'm traveling and actually most of the times I don't. So I'm just gonna go in with the Le Volume de Chanel and this is a volumizing mascara, but very, very natural as well. I'm gonna use one of the um, disposable applicators that I have from my kit. I'm just going to decant some on it so it just preserves the hygiene of this. So we're on the final part of the look and it is just the lips left to do. I'm going to miss out all the sort of highlighter and the cheeks um, for blushes just for the purpose of this keeping it very understated and minimal. But I'm going to go for something that's very close to my lip colour because that's sort of the colour that I would generally wear on a daily basis and actually the closest I have that I've managed to find is this one by Kiko Milano is actually just a lip pencil I've put on the lip balm from uh, before I applied all the makeup so it's very nourished at the moment um, usually I would normally wear something like this Charlotte Tilbury color but I think it's a little bit too dark for an ID photo and it's almost close to the end of it so I don't think it'll be something that I'd be carrying with me all the time and wearing all the time since somebody changes the look quite often so I'm going to go for the safe bet and for a natural colour and I'm going to try to get the shape to be as close to my natural lip as possible without overlining it too much or changing the shape too much. Um, but if I were to give a tip on what you should wear then I would pick a colour that you're normally used to wearing. You could go for a safe bet like me and choose a colour that's closest to your natural lip colour. So this is the final look, what do you guys think? If you enjoyed this video then do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to stay tuned for more videos like this. Alternatively, if you do have any questions or other sort of videos you'd like me to create in the future, then also do leave it in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. In the meantime, do check out my other social media platforms. I have recently added a blog section on my website. So my website is um, rinzan.art. Um, so if you click on that, you'll see a blog section on the top of the link and uh, you'll be able to follow all the latest news that I've um, discovered in terms of beauty and um, fashion related um, news when it comes to makeup and fashion. We've done a, a really cool theme that I really enjoyed recently um, and it was all like the looks that I did that were all reds um, and also a lot of very um, interesting shoots that I'll be posting very soon as well so stay in tune, subscribe, uh, follow me on Instagram, um, I am on Twitter as well and I'll try and be more active on it, as well as TikTok, I'll be getting myself back into um, all the socials, so do find me there. Have a lovely week and I'll see you next Sunday. Take care guys, bye bye.